Hola Reyes y Reinas, Hi Kings and Queens. I pray that today I find you excited for today's devotional. Many of you may be wrapping up your day or um, maybe you are about to get ready to go have date night or I don't know what is going on in your world. However, I do know that we're about to get activated. Um, if you are having a rough day, this is a perfect time and opportunity for us to um, learn today with the Lord. And let's just have this time where we can be activated. In Jesus' name, we honor you, Lord, for today's word. Um, even though I'm logging on today in the evening, I just pray that if you're about to get some rest or you're getting home to just relax. Um, I just pray that you have great peace in your life. And if you don't, let's just right now activate the peace. Let's activate the Holy Spirit so we can lift his fruits and surrender our whatever it is that needs to be surrendered in Jesus name. Um, and today we're reading from Luke 6, 28, which reads, pray for those who mistreat you, period. <laughs> How many of us have been mistreated and we always feel like, oh, they didn't apologize to me. Um, and you're like, I don't want to pray for them. What I've learned is that when I pray for somebody who has offended me, persecuted me, or betrayed me, I've learned that it softens my heart. So therefore, my heart gets softened and I can forget the offense or therefore just allow the Lord to heal me, if that makes sense. Um, but Lord, have your way. We honor you for great knowledge. Um, wisdom ideas and strategies father and wisdom knowledge beyond our years of age thank you for your peace your protection and more than anything father your presence in jesus name have your way thank you father and today we're reading um today's title is love through prayer for years john had been somewhat of of an irritant at church he was bad temper bad tempered demanding and often rude he complained constantly about not being served well and about volunteers and staff not doing their job he was honestly hard to love, so when I heard that he'd been diagnosed with cancer, I found it difficult to pray for him. Memories of his harsh words and unpleasant character filled my mind, but remembering Jesus called to love. I was drawn to say a simple prayer for John each day. A few days later, I found myself beginning to think a bit, a bit less often about his unlikable qualities. He must really be hurting, I thought. Perhaps he's feeling really lost now. Prayer, I realized, open, ourself, open ourselves, our feelings, and our relationships with others to God, allowing him to enter and bring his perspective into it all. The act of submitting our will and feelings to him in prayer allows the Holy Spirit to change our hearts. Amen. Slowly but surely. No wonder Jesus' call to love our enemies is bound up tightly with a call to prayer. Pray for those who mistreat you. I have to admit, I still struggle to think well of John. But with the Spirit's help, I'm learning to see him through God's eyes and heart as a person to be forgiven and loved. Amen. That, this is crazy. I did not study this. I did not go over this. Um, I've learned that through praying, it changes my heart. It changes my mind. It changes my words. It changes my thoughts, if that makes sense. And today's questions are, why is it important to pray for even the difficult people in your life? Um, as I mentioned, I feel that it's important because it softens our heart. Um... And you don't even know if there's someone is is praying for them. I many many times we come across people that are, you know, their blessings or their lessons. And I've learned that if someone mistreats me, I do not want it to become ill in my heart to to um, make my heart be bad soil. So therefore, like it makes you bitter. And what does it mean when you say that your heart is not good soil? It means that whatever God blesses you with or puts in your, your heart or in your life, you could abuse of it simply because you're mad or you're angry um, in your heart. And whatever it is that he's given you, you will not prosper in it because you're upset, you're offended, you're hurt. So I've learned that when we pray for difficult people or even when I am come across someone that could be difficult or offensive or just straight up mean or rude to me, I try my best to be a loving person to them because I don't know what they've been through, but I do know that hurt people hurt people. So if that person is real, you know, if they're, they're hurting me, they're clearly hurting in their hearts. And if I could do anything to try to make this world a better place, I want to be what um, I want to experience. So I try to be loving to others. Um, am I always? No pray for me. However, I've learned that in praying for people and even being there for difficult people in my life, it's changed them. It's changed it's changed me, but being loving towards them has changed them and it's like I I am like God, they used to be this way, you know. I I just have this um I just feel that it's always an opportunity to be loved to someone that could be unlovable or doing unlovable things to others if that makes sense. The second question is what can you pray for them? 
first of all i thank god that i got to encounter that why would you thank god is my i thank god because it's it's revealing to me that i'm strong in love because god has created he, he's put me in a lot of situations to where i love on them and i'm realizing now that it's become easier and i'm thankful to be an opportunity of love to someone because um god is love and if i can be that i'm honored to be loved does it always feel like honoring no many times it doesn't sometimes it's just a muscle and once you become strong in it and you encounter people you just want to love them because you're like man like i feel bad it's like they don't know or maybe they don't have enough love or support around them that they feel they have to be ugly a lot of times people have um their guards up a lot of times people are in um what is it um they're just in defense mode they they don't they really don't experience love or unconditional love in their lives and we always have to be open minded um to to know and realize that not everyone has love or has experienced love um consistently you know and there's also people that that don't know about god so it's your it's like an honor and opportunity to be loved if that makes sense today's prayer is loving god you know how we feel about those who've hurt or irritated me please give a, irritated us Please give us your heart of grace and compassion to pray for them, for you love them too. So um, I pray that that blesses you. And today's insight, I'm going to go ahead and read. Um, there's another scripture, which is, But to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, and pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on the cheek, turn to turn to them the other also. That has been a very hard scripture for me. If someone slaps you on the cheek, turn the cheek. It's like seriously, just turn your cheek. I've always said that sometimes you want to slap someone with the Holy Spirit because you're like, mm. but if someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks of you. And if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have done them, done them to you. So basically be the love that you would want to receive in this world. Um, and today's insight is the challenging commands that Jesus gives in Luke 6, 27 to 31 are clear. Or to love, bless, and do good to others by reading further. However, we see the rational for these extortions. Love your enemies, do good to them, and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. I was talking about that a couple of days ago. Then your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, because he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your father is merciful when followers of Jesus flip the script on hate, abuse, or selfishness. They demonstrate their kinship to their Heavenly Father, whose care is shared without discrimination. So I pray that that blesses you. And the last scripture is for, well, the last um, advice is follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love, Jesus as Christ loved us, gave himself up for the fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So I pray that that blesses you today. And um, I pray, loving Lord, you know how we feel about those who have hurt us and irritated us. Please give us your heart of grace and compassion to pray for them, for you love them too. And we have enough love to love others. So in Jesus' name, I pray that that blesses you and you have a great restful day today, um, the evening, and that you have a beautiful weekend with great peace, protection, and prosperity. And remember, um, if this added value to your life, please share, share, share. Um, I cannot stress enough. If you like and share, it puts it in the algorithm to bless others. Many of us can love on others by simply sharing these videos. Um, so I just pray that you know and you always know that you're a child of the Most High. Don't let anyone uh, make you believe or act anything less than that. So um, let's love on others and remember your king or queen, reign responsibly, and let's love responsibly. So in Jesus' name be blessed. I'll see you soon. Bye. Oh, and today I'm wearing the Hagar Lash with lots of mascara from the Lord and Esme Beauty Holy Lash Collection, the first and only lash collection collection dedicated to God, named in honor of God, but named in honor of women in the Bible. And I put the purchasing link below. So thanks for your time. Rest well. Good evening. Bye.